eleven um, two thousand and three if we would now stand for the pledge of allegiance I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all Adjustments to our agenda this evening. We do have one, um, which we will have an executive session um, at the conclusion of this public session. Yes. <coughs> you have to tell for the reason. purpose. Oh, um, for uh, teacher contract negotiations, collective bargaining. And now the approval of the February school board minutes. Does anyone have any comments or questions? Okay. Then we can move on to um, comments from our high school students. Aaron. Hello. Um, on March 23rd, the sophomore class is sponsoring Bob Marley to come to the high school. Tickets, I think, are $15 each and they're going towards money for the class. And so I think that's a really good activity that they've planned for the school. Um, we just won Hockey Boys States, and the fan behavior at that game was very good. And there were tons and tons of Cape students and parents and everyone there. It was really great to see all the support. Um, recently, there have been some problems with the library um, due to lack of availability of computers and cubicles. And so I think some meetings are being set up right now to talk to the librarians about that and also issues with being wrongfully accused of different things and inconsiderate behavior that's coming from both sides. Um, also, the math department and SAC are having a socks and toiletries drive. It actually ended on Friday. Um, the junior class won. There was a competition. And they'll have an ice cream social sometime soon, I think. Um, also, course selection sheets have just come in for next year, and juniors finished the MEAs today, went well. Also, um, the One Act Festival for um, theater was this past weekend, and our, our play Metamorphoses won, I believe, two individual awards. Yep, oh, thanks very much. Um, how are you doing today? There's another thing that's going on at the high school. Uh, there's four finalists for the national math exam. Um, we took a national math exam. You had to pay. Actually, I don't think we had to pay this year, but usually you have to pay a dollar. Anyway, we went to the lecture hall, and our math teachers, of course, encouraged us to go and take this test. And it's kind of like a big math meet. And everybody takes the test, and whoever scores very high can uh, move on. So we had four finalists this year, which is very well. Um, also, girls swimming won states, and uh, my team, the boys team, got third. We did pretty well. And congratulations to the girls team. They did excellent this year, the second year in a row. Um, furthermore, there's a French Five play, which is AP, one of the AP French courses. They're having a play um, during school coming up next week, I believe, where they're going to make fun of some teachers and uh, give us a good time in <laughs> French. So it should be exciting. Um, also, we had several high school students uh, participate in an art competition, and uh, a couple of them were chosen be exhibited at the Portland Expo, uh, Portland Museum of Art, excuse me. And uh, they were recognized, some of them were recognized nationally, so congratulations to them. Also, congratulations to this excellent jazz band we have here for winning Berkeley for the fifth year in a row. And uh, some other things that happened at the high school, we had intramural sports sessions, three and three basketball, just uh, finishing up this week. And uh, that's, going, that's pretty cool. I uh, kind of tried to play basketball, but went pretty well. And uh, we're supposed to have 5 and 5 volleyball coming up, too. So it gives students kind of a chance to compete against each other if they're not playing varsity sports or in between seasons. Um, the last thing I was going to talk about today was um, crisis in Iraq. Uh, our teachers have been pretty informative about that and gave us chances to discuss it in school. I know my government class discussed it for a whole period. And Helen was telling me that um, her class with Mr. Lee was discussing it. And, uh, you know, so we could hear different sides of the issue and have debates and uh, discussions about what's happening. So we can get an understanding of, you know, the current events and the seriousness of the issue. Um, one other thing is uh, Miss Guthrie in the Mac lab, uh, no, says the high school, 
and uh, her middle school counterpart, I guess, uh, got together because some middle schools were having questions about you know the crisis in Iraq and why we're going to war and some some of the issues. So they got together and uh, had a you know informative meeting where high school students uh, could come down after school it was last Thursday and uh, talk to the middle school students and they had cookies and stuff. So it was, it was pretty good. And uh, they invited some professors from USM. Um, one of them could make it and uh, who had been to Iraq. So they kind of answered some questions from middle school students and people got to you know show their points of view and the reasons for it. It wasn't really like a heated debate, but it was more informative. So I think that's nice. Um, they're going to have one this Thursday, too, after school. And uh, every, everybody's welcome to come to it. Anyone who has questions or wants to voice their opinions. So I think that's really good issues. Any questions? Questions or comments? Thank you. We can move on to the middle school, Elise and Elise. Good evening. Um, the fifth and sixth graders had their CATs all last week. Um, on Friday, when they didn't have their CATs, the fifth graders had their own special day called Fifth Quest, which was modeled after um, Wonder Years. And there are different classes that they could choose from, which had presentations and expeditions, exhibition, <laughs> and um, activities. And there are a lot of presenters from the high school and other community members. And in the morning, they had a YAAPP class, which helps prevent bullying. And that was a big hit. The Chiwanki information for the sixth graders is coming next week, so they're getting psyched up for that. And um, many sixth graders are involved in under track, as it's one of the two sports that they are allowed to be in. And this Friday, there's a fifth and sixth social at high school. Um, the second trimester ended for the middle school um, Friday, and the court cards will come out next Tuesday. In the seventh grade, they took the CATs last week. Um, in the eighth grade, uh, we finished the MEAs last week, and the high school recommendations came out about two weeks ago. And this um, tomorrow night, the high school is hosting incoming freshmen and their parents um, at an open house where they can ask questions and um, learn more about high school um, course selections. And for sports, boys basketball had their last game today. And track has had two meets so far and is going well. And swimming has been going on for about four weeks and is also going really well. Any questions? And <laughs> there's an all choral concert featuring all the middle school and high school singing groups <coughs> on March 27th at the <coughs> high school auditorium at 7.30. Okay. Thank you. Now we will move on to communications. Does anyone have anything? Kevin? Good evening. I have two, uh, two comments tonight. The first relates to the proposal to impose admission slash parking fees uh, at Fort Williams Park. I learned in watching uh, the Channel 6 News last Friday that the schools apparently have become the center of this issue. Um, one individual on the council mentioned that this was related to the schools and another individual on the council referred to us as special interests. I would like to go on record that this board did not make that proposal. We did not review that proposal. We did not endorse that proposal. This is a town matter. How the town chooses to rate, uh, spend the funds if they do impose this is also a town matter. I certainly wouldn't be opposed to taking some of that money, of course, but that is a town matter and it is not school-centered. And the other thing is, I speak only for myself, as a resident of Cape Elizabeth and a member of the school board, I did not give up my right to have an opinion on that issue, and I will express my opinion on uh, Thursday at the public hearing. However, when I express that opinion, I express the opinion of Kevin Sweeney resident, not Kevin Sweeney board member. That's number one. Number two is, I learned in reading the local newspapers that we apparently have done away with D.A.R.E. Um, 
That is a huge concern to me. I realize that there is a controversy over whether DARE has any lasting benefit. Um, but I do believe, and I've always considered the DARE program to be the linchpin in the beginning of the entire outdoor experience program that goes on throughout the middle school and uh, is now spreading out towards the high school. So while I have no vested interest in DARE, I certainly do have an interest in making sure that we are providing uh, our younger people with education on substance abuse issues, and I think that the board needs to discuss this as soon as possible. That's it for me. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? In communication? In uh, comments from the public, are there any? Okay, then we will move on to recognition tonight. This evening we have um, Sue Weatherby, who is being recognized by the National Girls and Women in Sports, and um, our high school's uh, concert jazz ensemble and the Berkeley Jazz Festival winners. Good evening. Um, we have quite a few people here um, to be recognized this evening. And our first uh, item on the agenda as far as recognition um, goes to Sue Weatherby. And um, I was able to attend um, a very large um, event held over in Portland on National um, Women in, in Sports Day. And at that event, um, Sue Weatherby received one of the one of the um, top awards that were given, um, and there were hundreds of people in attendance, and it was quite an event, and I think quite an honor to have someone on our, on our staff that, as most of us know, uh, contributes to us in, in, in so many ways, um, but it was really something to see that people outside of our own community and how much they appreciate Sue has, has given uh, in terms of uh, women's sports. Uh, in the state of Maine. So we are going to present her with uh, a certificate that signifies our appreciation and it reads, uh, the Cape Elizabeth School Board presents this award for outstanding accomplishment to Sue L. Weatherby. In recognition of your outstanding accomplishment as a coach at Cape Elizabeth High School, as evidenced by your selection by the National Girls and Women in Sports, as a winner of the 2003 Exemplary Professional Award in appreciation for the Cape Elizabeth School Board. So. Certainly it was a great award for me to receive. I felt very well supported that evening um, by my family, friends, um, staff members, and our superintendent. So thank you to all, that, all of those that attended. I think the other thing which is really gratifying for me as a public recreator, I live in a community where parents support athletics on behalf of their daughters as much as they do their sons. So uh, it gives me great pleasure to represent Cape Elizabeth in this too. So thanks a lot. Now our next group, um, this is becoming an annual event. Um, our jazz band, as we all know, is, is just outstanding. Um, and they seem to walk away with all the prizes at the Berkeley Jazz Festival every year and uh, are recognized. Um, I think one of our, our goals as a school district is to reach as far as we can uh, to set the bar a bit higher. Um, and this group certainly has done that as they're not just recognized as an outstanding group in Maine, but, but outside of Maine in the, and in the entire region. Uh, so it's really a privilege for us to present them with some certificates. We also have with us this evening uh, representatives from, um, from the legislature. Um, and I think uh, Janet McLaughlin, uh, if Janet would, would come forward. And um, 
I think Janet contacted Marie um, in looking to, to recognize this group. Um, so I don't know. I think it's probably easier for Janet to come down from Augusta rather than all of you go to Augusta. So that's why she's here this evening. Um, so I'll turn it over first to you. I thought that was a cost-saving measure. <laughs> <laughs> Delighted to be with you this evening. Actually, the, you, Cape Elizabeth has two state representatives. I represent most of Cape Elizabeth, as we say, in the legislature. And, you, and here's I'm the Mary Bliss, and I represent the rest of Cape Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> and we are delighted to be here this evening. What we have for you folks is a legislative sentiment. It reads, State of Maine, be it known to all that we, the members of the Senate and House of Representatives, join in recognizing the Cape Elizabeth Concert Jazz Ensemble, winners of the 35th Annual High School Jazz Festival at Berklee College of Music in Boston. For the fifth consecutive year, this talented ensemble has won the festival, the largest of its kind in the United States. We extend our congratulations and best wishes to these accomplished musicians, and be it ordered that this official expression of sentiment be sent forthwith on behalf of the 121st legislature and the people of the state of Maine. It is signed by Beverly Daggett, President of the Senate, Patrick Caldwell, Speaker of the House, Joy O'Brien, Secretary of the Senate, and Millicent McFarland, Clerk of the House. It was sponsored by myself, by Representative Bliss, and by our state senator, Senator Bromley. And I don't know who ends up with this in their hands this evening, I'll let you decide that and let you take it back to the school for proper display at the school. But we're very proud of you. It's delightful for us being in Augusta and saying, oh yes, let us, let's tell you what Cape Elizabeth did this week. <laughs> it seems like we have that ongoing pattern with some of our colleagues and we're very, very proud of you and it's delightful to be up there working for you. Thank you for letting us be here tonight and joining you. We're going to call each those of you that could be with us if they up for an individual certificate. And I think we have a little handshaking procedure we'll have to go through here. And I'll just read the certificates and Marie will present along with uh, our representatives. And this certificate reads, a certificate of recognition. And the first one, presented to Claire Regan. This certificate is presented by the Cape Elizabeth School Board in recognition of outstanding achievement as a member of the Concert Jazz Ensemble. First place winners in the small school division, Berkeley College of Music High School Jazz Festival. Signed, Superintendent of Schools, Thomas Fasol, and School Board Chair, Marie Prager. Claire. Colin Wilcox. <laughs> Carl Hagman. <laughs> Jason Anastasoff. Austin Bass. James Francesco. Probably all practicing. Uh, James Donahue. Dan Gray. <laughs> Emily Dodd. <laughs> Leslie Harrison.
Tiana Schneider. Pat Myers. Derek Roy. Lindsay Dana. John Butterworth. Adam Jackson. And this year, uh, we're very fortunate um, to have, as a, a first year um, director of the Jazz Ensemble in our music program at the high school, and uh, I just hear great reviews about the job he's been doing at the high school, and that's uh, Tom Lozat. First of all, I'd like to thank you very much for uh, all of the awards tonight. It's uh, humbling and um, just a very great thing to have recognition at home. That's not the case in every single uh, community, and that appreciation for the music program and the arts in this community is what sets it apart from many other communities. And I would uh, absolutely be remiss if I didn't give public recognition to the, the people who really made it happen through their dedication to the program and their hard work on an every single week uh, basis. We have fantastic students, and uh, all of the credit should go to them. Thank you very much. Tom, did, did we get everyone? No. <laughs> no. Who do we miss? We're hearing from the trombones. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I take full credit for it. <laughs> well, I will make sure you can recognize them. We will recognize them, and I'm sure we'll get certificates to you. But we want to make sure your names are read into the record. Um, who did we miss? If I could just. I'm reading these checkers. Well, come on up, and we'll give you a handshake, and we have a <laughs> Make, if you could, Tom, if you could jot down the names and we'll get your certificates and we apologize. And again, first and last name? What's your, what's your name? Reed Hansen. Hansen. And Jacob Metzger. Jacob Metzger. Metzger. And Guy Egan. Oh, okay. And Jenny Wild. And Jenny Wild. We have, we have those that we missed. Do you have the names? We'll get them. Okay. <laughs> we'll get them. Thank worry. you all very much for coming. Um, we are going on to our regular uh, business meeting. You, you can stay if you'd like. It's, it's really interesting stuff. Or you can take a minute to, to leave before we get started again. But thank you. I'll call you tomorrow. Right, what's going to do? That's all right. I'll put it. Mary, she's accepted. It really was. Could have said, sure. The kids would feel much worse if they thought it. That's a good
Now we can move on to the superintendent's report. Tom? Yes, yeah, just a few items. Um, we have a notification of retirement. Uh, Sandra Burley, uh, after over 30 years of service to the district, will be retiring this year. Um, I also would like to take a moment, if you remember, um, uh, a while back we had a trip um, to New York City in the, through the economics class, and at that time there were some issues and they have created some guidelines. Um, they are planning a, uh, the second semester trip, uh, which we, we've, the school administration felt that it was important to have some guidelines to prevent some of the issues that had happened before. Um, so I just wanted to share with you the, the, what's going to happen on this trip that will be different than, than trips in the past. Um, that there will be two chaperones uh, for the ninth. There are only nine students. Um, there will be student bags will be checked. Um, there will be duplicate keys for rooms that the chaperones will have. Uh, there will be a lights out time um, after the group returns from dinner. Um, and rooms will be checked twice during the night, um, once after lights out and once an hour or so later. Um, the, the teacher, Ted Jordan, has spoken with the students about this and about the guidelines, and I guess they came up with these cooperatively. Um, there, has been a meet, there has been a meeting with the parents uh, about the trip so that uh, we could avoid any of the issues that, that happened um, on the last trip to New York City. Um, and that's it. Okay, thank you. Um, we can move on to the principal's reports. Tom Pankov. Good evening. Just a few items to bring to your attention tonight. Um, first of all, we're finishing up MEAs this week with makeup exams for kids who were absent last week, and those exams are. Uh, this time of year in science, social studies, and the visual and performing arts. Um, I have to comment that the complaint level has risen even more this year about the uh, complexity of the directions that the fourth graders have to wade through. And uh, I think that's feedback we're going to give to the test makers about that. And I've also heard from a number of students in the fourth grade that their favorite part of the exam now is the multiple choice. And I'm not sure that's a good sign if we're trying to get at kids' deeper understanding uh, about um, learning results, among other things. Um, I read one of the local papers that um, Principal Jeff Shedd took the grade 11 MEA. And he's not here tonight, but he might be able to enlighten you further about the insider's perspective on the MEA. Uh, moving on to something a little more positive, actually we did this on the first day of the MEA. We had our annual Dr. Seuss Read Across America Day last Monday. And uh, we did things a little differently this year, and thanks to the parent volunteers and the uh, Allied Arts team um, pulling off um, school-wide celebration in the morning, then having maps of the school, it was a, a great success again. And since the theme was the Dr. Seuss or the places you go, we also combined the Dr. Seuss Day with what's become another annual event, the Wear in the World Day. Grown-ups and kids wear t-shirts with a geographical location on them. And uh, Janet Emberger, who brought that, event to us years ago when she joined the staff. Janet Emberger's class graciously kept track of all the countries and cities visited. And this year, thanks to Jeff Inglis and someone else, I'm not sure who, we got Antarctica on our list of continents. We haven't gotten Antarctica before. Just a, a few words about teacher leadership uh, to follow up when I mentioned at the budget meeting a couple of Saturdays ago. Um, I just want to point out that this year, it seems more than in previous years, our team leader meetings are becoming more focused on curriculum instruction uh, instead of some of the administrative trivia that used to creep in in the past. For example, um, kindergarten teacher Amy Kieran is also a member of Sarah Simmons' Curriculum Instruction Assessment Committee. And we used a process this year of, uh, to review a new document that the committee has come up with. Amy brought that document with notes from the committee to a team leaders meeting and explained it in great detail to the team leaders who will now take it back to their respective teams for further processing. I think that's a, one example of team leadership. 
uh, teacher leadership. Uh, the second is that each of the team leaders this year has been responsible for helping facilitate a lesson study. We're now about <coughs> one third to halfway through our second cycle of lesson study. We, we've uh, tailored that to the ebb and flow of the year because it gets so busy in May and June. So we hope to be done with our lesson study uh, by mid-April. Um, to me, this is an example of what happens when we give teachers the time to talk about what they're actually doing in the classroom, to share their expertise, share their thoughts, try a lesson, um, analyze it later, and connect their findings with uh, national standards and assessments. I think it's a great use of time and it can help further our work, not just in Pond Cove, but the whole district. Um, and finally, we're, we're going to, since we're still heavily invested in this, we'll be spending our late start Monday um, furthering our work with lesson study. Questions? Thank you, Tom. And Jeff isn't Jeff here is from the high school, so we'll move on to Nancy. Um, good evening. Jeff and I were at a meeting together this afternoon, and when I uh, became aware he wasn't going to be here this evening, he let me know, and I passed it on to our colleague Tom Eismeyer that Jeff ceded all of his time to Tom. Um, noticing that Tom didn't take it up, I guess I'll have to fulfill that job. Oh, I did. <laughs> you did a fairly good job, Tom. That was, that was pretty good um, kind of thing. Um, just a couple of things, because I get to work with a reporting team of Elise, Elise, and me, and Elise and Elise usually cover just about everything. Um, one thing in the fifth grade they didn't get a chance to mention is our fifth grade students are doing a community project right now. They are collecting returnables and um, going to put the money towards the Heifer Project, which they work with a charity, and um, they go to um, communities, and people in those communities can either purchase an animal for consumption or um, an animal that will help them do their work, and these go to um, underdeveloped countries and things. So the students are doing that. They'll be doing that now um, throughout the rest of the school year, and each week a different fifth grade classroom is in charge of collecting them. And after the first week, they had a very successful week, and it was Andrew Lomat McNear's team's turn to do that. So Andrew took all the returnables to the Redemption Center, and um, he wanted to me to share with everyone that that was in itself a learning experience, going to the Redemption Center. So um, this week, he'll be happy to share that with one of his colleagues. <laughs> also, just before the February break and just after our last board meeting, we had the middle school spelling bee, and it was... One of the more challenging spelling bees we've had, the words were really very difficult, and we also had one of the longest, if not the longest, spell down, where the, the runner-up and the, win, the eventual winner um, went for quite a few rounds. Um, the audience was very respectful, the words were very challenging, and our two finalists were Michael Katzos in the eighth grade and Sarah Friedman in the sixth grade, and Sarah was the eventual winner, and she participated in the Cumberland County Bee, and although she didn't win that bee, she, I talked with her, she had a great deal of fun and a good time doing that, and, and lasted pretty well in that bee as well, too, so congratulations to both of them. Also, just a reminder, we do have the play coming up April 4th, 5th, and 6th, and for each, we'll be mailing to each town council member, um, to the town manager, to all the school board members, and to the superintendent, some complimentary tickets. They're all in advanced sales, but... Um, the other ones, you have to tell us which night you're coming, but for you folks, whichever night you could come, we hope that everybody is able to make it one night um, to the play. Earlier, the Egan family was out here, and um, Hillary Egan is one of the writers of our middle school musical. Last board meeting, when I mentioned this, and that it would be a time where students could really show some of their learnings, I read in one um, write-up in a news report that um, although I said the students would be sharing their learnings, um, someone else said, but no, it won't be about that. I really didn't mean to imply that it was about mathematics and geometry and um, social studies, that the learnings they would be sharing is about how to write parts of the things, how to word songs, how to work collaboratively, how to cooperate, how to understand maybe my first choice wouldn't get chosen, all of those kinds of things, which I think are important learnings in middle school as well, too. And other than that, I'd be glad to answer any questions you have about the Elise and Elise report. They did an excellent job and covered just about everything else that's been going on in the middle school. So 
if i could be of any help i'd be glad to do that otherwise that would be it any questions for nancy i have a comment i just want to say um thank you to the mspa and the people that are involved in the um email that we get every week now as far as communicating mm -hmm. some of the details about what's happening in the school i think it's a huge jump and it's wonderful as a parent to be able to rely on that and not necessarily my middle schoolers to share some of the important right. information we, and we we have talked about that and actually debbie cushing worked on that a lot along with kathy um, who i think helped her with some of the things because i believe kathy walsh does some of that um, for the high school and thinking for many years that our middle school parents association newsletter that we mail home has been a great way to get information but it's not the weekly announcements about play rehearsals and some of those other things so just trying to think of what's the best way to communicate now not that that newsletter hasn't been a good thing but is that still the best way to do it now and i know we just had a meeting today with the mspa and um deb's been receiving a lot of nice compliments about that and people really seem to be taking advantage of that so for anyone who's listening who would like to get on that email list if they just contact debbie cushing or contact the middle school office we'll be sure that um, debbie cushing gets your email address and she will make sure that you get a copy of that every monday but she's done a nice job with that thank you it is a great thing receiving that every week i look forward to it thank you We'll move on to the committee reports. Uh, we'll start with the finance committee. Uh, the finance committee met prior to um, our regular meeting. Uh, we quickly signed warrants and we reviewed the appropriation report. There was a discussion on uh, some cost estimates that we received from Pauline on um, the rental of the Hamlin School, which is a proposal that will go into more detail tomorrow's meeting or workshop with town council. And there was also some uh, budget discussions. That was about it. Okay. Thank you, Elaine. The policy subcommittee, Susan? Mm -hmm. We met on um, March 5th, and um, we reviewed and revised the final drafts of the Code of Conduct, which now um, go out to certain um, parent groups and teachers and staff members and so forth to provide feedback on, on our draft, and then it will come back to us, I'm thinking, in April, which is not very far away, I'm realizing. Um, and, and hopefully we'll be ready as a package at our April meeting for first reading here. Um, in addition to that, we did review and revise um, the graduation requirement so that we um, have covered what we need for learning results because we'd been waiting for some guidelines from the state, never got those, so we went ahead and um, address that and also uh, class size policy we um, reviewed and revised our policy around class um, size and rather than using class size um, as a measure for grades 7 through 12 we're now starting to move and follow other school systems in recommending student load in grades 7 through 12 um, and and those somehow between my having left that meeting and tonight didn't make it into our board packets. Um, totally my fault. So those will be ready for first reading next month as well. Uh, and then next month we hope to um, finish the expulsion of students guidelines, which also will go with the code of conduct, but that's going to um, follow at a later date. We'll, we'll do the code of conduct as a package next time. And um, we also hope to have ready for the April meeting hiring policies and guidelines, which I know people have been looking forward to to getting done this year. And our next meeting will be um, April 2nd, 12 noon, <coughs> in the Jordan Conference Room. Okay, thank you. Now we can move on to unfinished business. Um, the first thing on our list is the consideration of a proposed trip of high school mock trial team to national competition. This came to your attention at last month's meeting. I think we actually had a couple of the parents here. Um, and that was a request on the part of the mock trial team uh, to attend the national competition uh, in Louisiana, I think it is. Do we need a motion? Did you say Louisiana? Yeah, New Orleans. Orleans. New Orleans. Right. That's a different thing. That's a different group. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have a motion? Kevin? I move that we permit the uh, hmm. 
Yeah, I'm okay. Mock trial team <laughs> to attend the national competition if they can do whatever they need to do. Okay, second. Second, Kathy. Um, all those in favor? Seven, zero. Um, any discussion, comments, questions? I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> It's okay. We'll discuss it. <laughs> um, we voted for it. We can discuss also. After the conference. Uh, can I can I just um, ask a question? <laughs> um, Sorry. All right. Um, if we have guidelines for the um, economics trip, is this something where we're traveling a long distance with a, a you know a high school students that we should have the same type of guidelines? It's not a bad idea. We probably should have that, um, mm -hmm. create that for all kinds of trips of this nature. We do have a number of them. Um, it probably is a good idea. We don't have them right now. Mm -hmm. I think what we have is the specifics and the travel arrangements, all those kinds of things. Um, but in light of all kinds of things that can happen, it probably would be good to standardize those. We don't have them now, but. That's something we can ask. Is, I think it's more a high school issue than anything else, but ask the high school to come up with some guidelines. When is that trip? Yeah. Scheduled? I don't remember. Um, I don't know. We got the info. You had the information at the last, last, right. the last meeting. It's in the spring, I think, but I don't remember. When? It's a spring. I, I don't have well, the exact date. I mean, it's time to come up with some for that. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Would that be done through the policy subcommittee? No. no. These would be internal be guidelines. guidelines. I don't think it needs to be a policy. So that's something that Jeff would be able to present to us as mm -hmm. on a, on a right. trip basis. Right. Okay. But it would be the same guidelines for every trip. Mm. Right. I would assume. So sort of like I would think we could do that. Athletic trips, but, you know, right. Like Similar to the athletic trip form that we created. Yes. Right. That you could not just fill in the blanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. So would we be able to see something, say, next month mm -hmm. from Jeff? Okay. Um, the second thing is consideration of the proposal to adjust the timelines for the building renovation projects. Um, and actually, where, where we are right now with the public hearing tomorrow evening is um, we have said two things to the town council. Um, number one being that we would like for the council to fund the kindergarten, you know, to just go ahead and say that we can do the um, building project for a million and a half dollars. That is our number one choice. Our second choice would be for a fall referendum. Now, we have initially, we had initially laid out to the town council a spring referendum. However, with the, um, the, the timing that it's taken and the amount of time that it's taken to get to this public hearing and then to a vote, we were no longer able to do that. We wouldn't be ready for a spring referendum. So we have moved this to um, fall. So, I, we just want to be clear that that's where the school board stands at this point, that those are our two uh, recommendations to the town council, number one, for them to put it through, and number two, for a fall referendum. I think it just, we just need to be clear because it was never officially, the official recommendation of this group initially was um, for things to happen in the spring, whether it be by way of referendum this spring for the, for the um, um, addition to Pond Cove or by just the town council um, um, okaying a bond for the project. Um, because of where we are and the timing of it, um, town council, if they so choose, may still okay a bond uh, for this spring, um, but the referendum would have to happen in, in the fall. We, it's too late to have a referendum this spring. So just to be clear with everyone that that's where we stand and that's still the that's still a proposal. But the reason it's too late to have a referendum this spring is because the town council didn't have a public hearing on it prior to a certain date. Is that correct? Yeah, and I think it was, I don't, right, I think the initial um, timeline that we were working under um, looked 
that the last meeting that we had with the town council being the meeting where we would uh, move forward and then from there move ahead with the planning for a referendum if we needed one. We did not anticipate this public hearing, although it's, it's, it's a good thing it needs to happen, um, but that wasn't something that we anticipated. So it kind of thrown a little monkey wrench into having something happen this spring, so we'd have to wait till the fall. Essentially, all we're doing is revising our recommendation. Right. Okay. So do we need a motion to do that, or? I don't think you, I don't think you so, took a motion the first time. You okay, just so, right? Consensus. Okay. All right, so we're okay. Okay, then we, if there are no questions about that, are there questions, comments? Nothing? Okay, then we can move on to new business. Um, the first on our list is consideration of the superintendent's recommendations for athletic fee positions for this spring. Yeah, spring the, the following um, recommendations for, yeah, there's a, a misprint. It's, it is the spring of 2003. Um, the what? The misprint on the agenda. That's, oh. It is 2003. Mm -hmm. um, and the recommendations for returning high school coaches. Uh, Scott Labby, assistant varsity baseball, um, and recommendations for new high school coaches, Mark Renner, uh, JV baseball, and Tracy Weatherby as assistant track. Um, um, do, should Tracy have a level? Should, she sh should have a level. And so we will give her a level. Okay. <laughs> I know it's 183 hours, so we will make sure that this level either was left off or we'll have to put that on there. It's whatever's yeah, in the contract. Yeah, take credit for this one. I didn't type that, so. Yeah. Um, it isn't saying that she's would... on the level, which she probably <laughs> is. Well, this is her first coaching position, so she'd be level, level three. Level three. Okay, do we have a motion? Elaine? I move that we accept uh, superintendent's recommendations for uh, returning and new high school coaches for the spring sports season. Okay, second. George? Okay, comments or questions? None? Okay, all in favor? I think seven, zero. Okay. Um, next is consideration of two teachers' requests for a one-year paid leave of absence? Unpaid. Unpaid. Unpa oh, I'm sorry. Um, my glasses on. <laughs> that's an important little item there. Um, <laughs> we have uh, one teacher uh, request, uh, Heather Sanborn, for a one-year child-rearing leave um, after the birth of a child that's expected in August. And you have another request for a leave of absence for a special education teacher at the high school, Kathleen Hamlin, which is uh, child-related. Which is what? Child-related. Child it's, yeah. it's... Do we have a motion? Anyone? I move that we uh, accept the two requests from Kathleen Hamlin and Heather Sanborn for a one-year unpaid leave of absence. Okay, thank you. Second. George. Comments or questions? I just have a question for the mm -hmm. superintendent um, on his recommendations on these two. Oh, my recommendation would be to approve. I think actually for the child rearing is contractual. And for the other one, um, um, I, I think it's a, it's a worthy uh, request. But the, where this person happens to be in, in raising her children, I think it's a good idea. Any other questions? Okay, all in favor? Seven zero. Next is the consideration of a proposed high school speech and debate trip to participate in a national competition. Um, as you can read from Gretchen McNulty, um, there are um, students that are involved with the Forensic League speech and debate tournament. Uh, and we'd like to go to Arlington, Virginia. This will come back uh, to you next month. Um, with this trip, though, what's a bit different, and they are going to be part of a main contingent, so that they won't be, won't, the travel will be with a group 
of other main students that are participating in this competition any of the questions you might have we can get answers to but this will come back vote next month I think what they're looking for at this point is just if there are major concerns that they should know about so that they can continue to plan because I think they need to make some commitments to this group and reserve some spaces on with the with the main contingent do we need to vote then we don't know until next month okay okay so are there any questions concerns we just need to know discuss them no okay then we can move on to the consideration of the proposed 2003 for school budget I move that the school board approve the budget for the 2003-2004 school year in the amount of fifteen million three hundred and twenty eight thousand three hundred and twenty dollars okay a second Kathy comments questions none okay all in favor seven zero and next is the consideration of the proposed 2003-4 school calendar the calendar is coming before you this month and will come again next month for final approval and the the calendar that you have um, is traditionally what we've had for the for, for last year uh, very similar um, there will be the calendar committee has met on two occasions and the main discussion had to do with the first day for students um, this is a year where next year is a year where Labor Day uh, falls on September 1st. So there's been quite a bit of discussion about when do we start students back to school. Um, in the discussions the calendar committee had um, just recently, um, because the needs of the high school and K-8 um, as far as parent desires and um, and even staff issues were a bit different at, at the schools. Um, there was a suggestion to look into the possibility um, of having two different start dates. Um, and so what we are doing is surveying parents, uh, getting more information, taking a look into what, what the ramifications of that would be. Um, and that would be that the high school um, staff and parents included, uh, the vast majority feel that starting school in August um, is something they'd rather do um, because of the high percentage of kids that are participating in athletics for example they're already back at school um, so starting um, before labor before Labor Day is something that fits right into their plans uh, we have received input from staff at uh, Pond Cove and at the middle school that they would like to entertain the idea because of where Labor Day falls this year of starting the students after Labor Day. Um, so there, the question we have is how much of an inconvenience would this be for parents who have kids at different levels? So that's what is, we are going to find out and we'll have that information for you when the calendar com comes back. Um, the one concern is this was, is a one year phenomenon. Um, Labor Day the following year falls on September 6th so in that particular year because of the calendar we we'd have to start everyone um, before uh, before Labor Day it would still be September um, but it would be before before Labor Day um, the concern though is we'd have to be make it very clear if this is something we're going to do that this is only for one year uh, we all get into habits we've been used to doing it this way uh, with the start before Labor Day, it's been this way for several years. I don't know how many exactly, but at least I know the four years that I've been here, um, we've always started before Labor Day. Uh, but there was a request. Um, parents want a chance to give some input, so we're going to do that, and we will share that with you before you take any action at your, at your next meeting. Any input? I have, a, I have a question. Does that mean that the K through 8 staff would still have the same teacher days this the 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 plan would be that we could um, it, it could be the way 
because the twenty seventh if if the staff at the other two schools came in the twenty seventh twenty eighth and twenty ninth we always have one district day with the entire staff gets together if that were the case twenty seven the twenty seventh could be that all district day and because which is crucial next year because we are planning a large scale workshop to review our future direction plan there's always a building day and there's usually a day where a lot of assessment curriculum type work is done but but it's not done as a whole group if there was a need to have two two days that they're together we could adjust that so that we have two of those days overlap but if that happened we'd have to we have to talk about how that would work best and the district leadership team actually will be meeting tomorrow and we can have some discuss we will have a discussion about if this plan can even work um, and I, I have a question. Um, then that would mean that K through eight would go back to school on September second, mm -hmm. and and part of the conversation that has taken place over the past few years has always been about starting uh, midweek or late week. That we have two days to get back into school before they start a complete week. So we wouldn't be doing that. They would basically and that's four day it, week. It's probably more. I would say. Um, a mix at the middle school and probably upon COVID, it's more of a wanting to start after Labor Day. So if you had to look at the entire district, um, this is one of those issues you're never going to get complete agreement. Um, so once we have all the surveys and the information back, um, you know, you'll make a decision and you're not going to make everyone happy. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's so what was the process for collecting the feedback surveys going home in backpacks? There, no, it's it's. Um, I've created an, an, an information sheet about this um, will be shared with district leadership team and each of the schools will decide how they're going to, to distribute that to parents. They can um, send it back, they'll send it back to individual schools. Okay. okay. Any other comments or questions? No. Okay, then before um, we adjourn this meeting to go into executive session, I'd just like to run through um, the next meeting dates. The next school board workshop meeting will be March 25th at 7 p.m. in the high school library. The policy subcommittee meeting will be Wednesday, April 2nd, 12 noon, here in the William Jordan Conference Room. Finance subcommittee, April 8th at 6.30 in the Jordan Conference Room, followed by our next scheduled um, school board meeting at 7.30. Um, and we would need a motion to uh, end public session and go into executive session. George? So moved. Okay. Uh, oh, but wait, but I for have to say of, for the purpose. For the purpose of discussing um, teacher negotiations and the business manager will join us. Okay. Um, a second? Susan? All those in favor? Seven, zero. Thank you.